Bears free agency roundup, it's day three. Today is the start of the league's new year. Teams have to be under the salary cap today. Also, teams can make signings official pending physicals. There should be a ton of action around the NFL today. Ryan Poles has added five free agents in the last week, and three of them were safeties making a clear statement that he wanted to upgrade the safety room with Kevin Byard, Tavarius Moore, and Jonathan Owens, and then added offensive weapons, DeAndre Swift, and tight end Gerald Everett. Today I wanted to discuss what's next for the Chicago Bears as we enter free agency officially. Today I wanted to discuss the remaining free agents still left, some guys who might be available soon, and what's going on with the Chicago Bears. Let's get right into it. Daniil Hunter was the big fish still left. He's 29 years old, but he's an elite pass rusher. I thought entering free agency that he was a bit too old to invest $100 million into, but rumors say the Bears were interested. He signed a two-year $49 million deal with the Texans last night. He had 16 and a half sacks last year, and for a two-year deal, most fans would have been fine with this, and I would have been on board. The problem is this isn't Madden, and reports are that Daniil Hunter turned down multiple offers that were for more money because he wanted to go home and play for the Texans. It's not always just about the money. But if the rumors are true, and Poles was interested in Daniil Hunter, how is he going to pivot, and what is next for us in free agency? Chase Young is the best pass rusher left. He's visiting the Panthers and Saints today, according to reports. He's one of the guys left on the market that I like the most, but his tape last year was uninspiring, and no way I'd offer him a big money deal. I think he fits on a one-year prove-it type deal. He needs to show teams some things before they invest big-time money on him, if you ask me. On top of that, there's no way Poles signs him without bringing him to Chicago for a visit first and getting a look at his knee. So far, he's not expected to visit the Bears, but that could change soon. I've already talked about how I expect Calvin Ridley to go back to Jacksonville today, so who else is left on the market? Arik Armstead is a guy I think we should all watch out for. He's one of my favorite potential guys left in free agency. It's important to note that so far he actually has not been officially released by the 49ers yet. That is expected to happen today, which is why he hasn't received any interest yet. Arik is a guy to keep an eye on. He is 30 years old, but he's a really good player, and he's a perfect fit for what Eberflus wants out of the three-tech spot. Next up, what about the center position? Connor Williams is the best center on the market by far. Most of the other centers I liked are gone. But what complicates things is he's recovering from a torn ACL and he would not be able to complete a physical right now. I'm unsure how his market is going to develop, but if Poles could land the best center on the market at a value, I would love it. Even if he misses half the season, I just don't expect this one to happen. So who else is out there? At wide receiver, Curtis Samuel seems like a great fit to upgrade our wide receiver room. His friendship with DJ Moore is well documented. I also wonder what Michael Thomas has left in his tank, but I do not see the Bears pursuing Hollywood Brown. A couple of other names I'll throw out there. Tyler Boyd is a slot receiver. Josh Uche is a situational pass rusher. And Sheldon Rankins is another guy who could play three-tech on a short-term deal. But I mentioned today's the start of the new league year, and the Chargers have a serious cap problem that they need to figure out today. And it looks like they will be potentially releasing a couple of players. They have four of the five highest non-QB cap hits in the entire NFL. Khalil Mack at $38.5 million, Joey Bosa at $36.5 million, Keenan Allen at $34.7 million, and Mike Williams at $32.4 million. The Chargers are more than $25 million over the salary cap limit, and they have to be cap compliant by 3 p.m. today. Could Khalil Mack be cut? I would be interested in any one of those four players if they got released. Keep an eye out for what the Chargers do today. But also, there's a wild thought here. The Bears could be in position to potentially get a comp pick in next year's draft. 
Think about that for a minute. Darnell Mooney and Justin Jones just got paid. In order to get a comp pick, you have to lose more money on free agents than you spend, which is why the Bears usually don't ever get comp picks. But the important part of this is that players that got cut do not count towards the comp formula. So the safety we signed, Kevin Byard, he does not count, and anyone the Chargers cut also wouldn't count. Same goes for Arik Armstead, and the Raiders are also expected to release Hunter Renfro today, a couple other potential options for the Bears to keep an eye on. And then there's another one who could be cut today as well. As reports are saying the Ravens are releasing Tyus Bowser, he has 19 and a half sacks on his career, but he did not play at all in 2023 due to a knee injury. But he's another interesting name that's going to be released. Poles has options here if he wants to sign someone and not affect his potential to get a comp pick. I do think ultimately that it's unlikely he can avoid spending that much more money and end up landing a comp pick, but we have 19 free agents total, and after seeing Darnell Mooney and Justin Jones get overpaid, anything can happen here, and as always, I think Ryan Poles is going to keep his options open. I think if Ryan Poles makes a big splash in free agency here, it's going to come on the defensive line. Honestly, keep an eye out for Arik Armstead. I think he's the best fit out there, and if you could get him on a one- or two-year deal, he would really upgrade our defensive line. Also, free agent edge rusher DJ Wanham is visiting the Chicago Bears today. He had eight sacks last year for the Vikings. He's only 26 years old and was a fourth-round pick in 2020. Wanham has recorded eight sacks in two of the last three years, and he has 20 sacks combined over the last three seasons. He's also really athletic, with a ton of burst off the edge and the length that Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus look for. He has 34-plus inch arm length and scored an 8.07 on the RAS score. He's a twitchy athlete with a ton of length and the ability to get after quarterbacks. He is visiting Hallis Hall today. Maybe Ryan Poles locks him up to a contract. But stay tuned, guys. Things should be heating up today, and news could be breaking at any time. Make sure you turn those notifications on. Hit that like button for me, and until next time, bear down.